Hello, my name is Ryan Bliss. I'm a fourth year electromechanical engineering technology student. And today I'll be showing you how to make a pick and place procedure on an ABB robot like this using Rapid. The pick and place procedure we will be creating consists of two pallets, pallet A and pallet B. We will be moving this part between the two pallets using this gripper end effector. And we'll be moving it from the first position in A to the first position in B. And then we'll be going to the second position in A, the second position in B, and etc. through all nine positions in both pallets. To do this, we will first have to define our work objects, which will be pallet A and pallet B, as well as our tool. To define our work objects, we'll be going into program data, click on work object data, and when we show this, we will see all of our work objects uh, in our robot. So we do still need to define our two work objects, which are palette A and palette B. So to do this, we will click on new and we will give it a name. We're gonna be naming this one palette A. There we go. And we can click okay. Now that we have palette A, we have to define it. So if you click on edit and define, we can define it using the three point method. What this means is that we will be defining the work object through three points. These three points will be the origin, the point that's going in the X direction, and the point that is going in the Y direction. We will be defining our work object around this point so that in our routine, we can increment in the positive x direction and the positive y direction to go from one, two, three, to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This origin is the same that we will be doing on palette B. We'll be making the origin here with the x direction that way and the y direction going up. To help us define these three points, we're going to be putting this into our end effector so that we do have a point to help us get the three points that we do need. So we're just gonna put this in, close it, and this will be how we define our work objects. So we are going to go to jogging, make sure that we're jogging in the X, Y, and Z direction, and we are going to bring the tip to where we wanna define our origin. Make sure to bring it down slowly so that you do not damage the robot. So we are now defined right here at our origin. So what we can do is go back to our work object, click on X1 and click modify position. It says modified, so it is now stored at this point. So now what we can do is we can jog to the one in the X direction. Now that we have that, we can click modify position again. And lastly, we'll go to our last point, which is in our Y direction. And we will click modify again. Now we can click okay. Now we have our work object defined. A great way to test if you did this correctly is to make it our work object when we're jogging. So we can make that and ensure that our coordinate system is in work object. From here, if you jog in the X, Y, and Z direction, we will be going in the same coordinate system that we want to do for our palette, which we did it correctly. From here, all we have to do now is create our palette B work object. So we'll be going into here and just change it to B. Okay. Once again, we're going to go into edit, define, click the three point method. And we're gonna wanna go to the origin on palette B, which is over here. First, we're gonna wanna go to jogging 
we're gonna change our coordinate system to our base coordinate system so that we're no longer moving it on palette A, so we can go and define palette B. From here, we can move it over to palette B to define our points. A good practice is to make sure that your work object is clear, like moving this part, so we don't accidentally hit it while defining it. So we're going to go to our first point over here. Perfect. We're gonna go back, we're gonna do the same steps that we did for palette A and start by modifying that position. Next, we're gonna go in the X direction. And then we're going to define that point. And then we're going to do it in the Y direction. There we go. And our last modify. Once again, we're going to do the same thing that we did for palette A to see if we defined it right. So now we should be moving in the X and Y direction. We move it like this, which we are. So now we are. So now we have defined our two work objects for our program. Another thing we need to define is our tool object. So if we go into program data again, go into tool data and show, you'll see tool zero, but we're going to create a new one. So we're going to label this, let's say, end effector. So from here, we can click OK. And similar to the work objects, we will be editing them so we can change its value. So we're going to be changing the value based on the height of this end effector, which I have pre-calculated, which we're going to be changing right here. So this will be different for your system. So you just have to make sure that you do it to the right height. Also make sure when you are defining it that you set the mass to whatever the mass of the end effector is. It will default this to negative one, so you want to make sure that you do put a mass in there. To make sure that we have the correct Z height, we will be taking out our pointer and we will be dropping it down for it to say when Z is equal to zero. So if we gradually drop this down, we will see that zero is right around here, which gives us a little bit of height. And that's the exact height that we want to pick these parts up at in our pallets. The last thing we need to define are our starting points for each pallet. We will be defining point A1 and point B1. With these two points, we can offset to get the rest of the values, but we need these points first for each of the pallets. For this, we will be putting a part that we will be moving into pallet A. And we're gonna wanna make sure that the gripper can grip this part and not smash it into the sides. And we will define this point. So first we're going to make sure that our work object is pallet A. And then we are going to move it to pallet A. Once we get over the part, we will be opening our gripper and then we're going to drop it down. From here, we are going to want to ensure that it is at a proper thickness. And we can see that if we were to close it, that the part stays in the center. So from here, we can define this point. So if we go back to our program data, and we have to view all data types, we can scroll down until we see Rob target. This is where we will be making our values. So we have no points yet. We can click a new point and we can label this A1. A1. 
click OK, and we have now defined where this point is. So we're going to need to do the same thing, but for palette B. So if we bring it over, move our part to B, we can drop down. ensure that it is in the center of the gripper and we can do that by gripping it and releasing it you can see that there is no pressure and that it stays in the same spot that we can define our new point and we can be calling this one b1 from here there is one point left to define and that is our safety point we want our safety point to be far away from these two pallets and we're probably going to be putting it above where we're going to be working. So if we move our robot up to a height, let's say around here, it is far enough away from our pallets and it will not hit anything. So that's a great place to start our program. So we're going to define this point and we're going to be naming it safety. And there we go. We had defined everything that we need to start coding to do our pick and place procedure. So if we go to program editor, you can see the rapid code that we have. And in here so far is everything that we have defined. You can code right here on teach pennant, but an easier way to code rapid is on a computer. So if it is connected over the same ethernet, you can do one click connect to actually connect to your robot. From here under rapid, you can find your main code. If you double click on this, it'll bring up your code here and you can edit in here. The only thing that you have to do to edit is to actually grant access from the teach pennant. So if you click yes on the pennant will come up this icon that says, would you like to grant or deny access? And you will just grant it. From here, you could do any editing you want in here. So in Rapid, you can type out all of your code. As you can see here, I have the code to actually run this program, and I'll be going through it step by step. So first up top, you can see everything that we did define, and we'll be using all this throughout our code. This is where our main starts, so this is where all of our code will go. So first, we are doing a linear move to a safety position. This is that last position that we identified way above the work objects to make sure that we don't crash into anything and it's a great starting point. So we're going to start off by going there. We're then going to reset our gripper and wait some set amount of time. We're going to reset the gripper just in case it is closed in the beginning. We do not want that because then it will run into the part. So by resetting it, it will open up the gripper. Right here I do have it labeled as gripper. But if you go over to controller and inputs and outputs, you can actually identify where this gripper is, which is the digital output. So you will just have to link that. Next is the big part of our code, which are all of the move functions. So here we're actually using a pick and place procedure, which I'll be going over shortly. And we have the start position, the end position, the start work object, and the end work object. These are all here so that when we change the values, we can flip between any set number of points and its respective work object throughout our whole code. So if we scroll down to the bottom, right here, these few lines are our pick and place procedure. And you can see up here what I said before. We have our start tar target end target, start work object, and our end work object. So what these moves consist of is moving linearly to an offset position from the starting point, which is 40 millimeters above. This will rapidly approach the part, but it will stay above it, and then we will slowly descend to it. This linear motion in and out of the part we'll make sure that it does not ram into the pallet. We will then move down. We will set the gripper picking up the part 
and we will move back out of the hole that the part was in. We then change work objects to our ending one, which in our first move it would be palette B. Once again we go to that set amount of distance above the hole, we go down, and then we release the part. And then this can be called at any point to run this pick and place procedure. So in our first line, line 16, it moves it from A1 to B1. What that looks like is it'll come in and it'll pick up the part and it will move it over here to B1. Line 17 picks it up from B1 and moves it off to A2. What this is doing is it is referring to the point A1 and offsetting at 30 millimeters in the X direction, which would end up at A2 because these are spaced 30 millimeters apart from each other. So it'll pick it up from here and drop it off here. Then line 18 moves it over to B2, line 19 moves it to A3, and so on and so forth through the whole palette. Once we get down here to line 22, this is where we can actually see it skipping to the next row. So it does a zero offset in the X and 30 millimeter offset in the Y, which will actually put it right here. And then that goes all the way until it reaches B9, which is the final position in our palettes. That is when down here, what it does is that it picks it up and it moves it back to A1 to restart this routine all over again. With your code all typed out on the computer, you can go up top to Rapid, click Apply and Apply All, and this will apply all changes to the Teach Pennant. Once you say yes, you can go onto your Teach Pennant, click Revoke again, and all the code from Rapid will now be on the Teach Pennant. And lastly, we have to run our code. So if you go to Debug and go to main. This will bring you to the start of your program. And from here, you can either skip forward and backward steps, or you can play through them and stop it. For the first few, I will click. It is good practice to step through on your first run, just to make sure that everything is coded correctly. And as you can see here, it goes right above it. It goes down, it picks it up picks it up and moves it over and now that I am confident with it I will just press the play button and let it play out and there you have it we have now made a pick-and-place procedure on this ABB robot using procedures in rapid